So the next concept that we're going to look at is we're going to try and compute the work done by a torque. Now, before we move forward, the first thing you need to know is that the definition of work does not change. It's exactly the same. In fact, if you remember, it is the dot product of the force and displacement, right? So that definition does not change. But what we're going to try and do right now is try to figure out what this work will be in terms of torque, right? When we apply a torque to a rotating rigid body, how much work is generated or how much work is done, we'll try to figure it out in terms of the torque, okay? Now, for that, let's take the simple example of a, a simple rotating disc that's pivoted at the center. So it's basically a disc that can rotate about its center, okay? And let's also assume that I have a person who is holding this disc at a point somewhere on the edge of the disc, right? And is rotating it by providing a force that's always tangential to the disc, okay? So let's say the magnitude of this force that this person is providing is always Ft, okay? So first, so let's say that this is the plane of the disc. And also, let's assume that this disc is being rotated for some time dt, okay? So now the question, is what is the what is the work done by this force ft okay so what is work done work done is nothing but the dot product of force and displacement right and displacement of what displacement in this case would be the displacement of the point of application right okay but this is actually a special case and this is make things very simple because because this force is always tangential to the disc right the point of application will always move in the direction of force at any single point of time. So the displacement of the point of application will always be in the direction of the force. So then the work done will basically be the force Ft into the distance traveled by the point. So let's say the distance traveled, overall distance traveled is ds. So the work done by this force will be Ft into ds. One point I'd like to mention over here is that ds is not the magnitude of the displacement. Now, if you look at this, the displacement vector is this vector, okay? But whereas the overall distance traveled is this arc length. ds over here is the distance traveled, the magnitude of the distance traveled, which is the length of this arc, where, which is not the length of the displacement vector. But wait, if you look at this, ds, right, is nothing but r into d theta, right? where r is the radius of this disk and d theta is the angle subtended, change in angle subtended by this point at the center, right? Basically this angle. So yes, so I can replace ds with r into d theta. So that means the work done by the force becomes ft into r into d theta. Fine. Now what is ft into r? ft into r is nothing but the torque produced by this force about the center, right? Perfect. Okay, so I finally get that if I replace that, then I get work done is equal to torque into d theta. All right, so this is what this is the work done in terms of the torque, right? This also fits with our, you know, with our model of just using our previous formulas that we learned and then replacing them with rotational analogs. Now, in, in normal mechanics or in translational mechanics, we found that work is nothing but f into ds. Right. Now, similarly over here, we get work, work done by torque is torque into d theta, which fits because torque is the rotational analog for force and d theta is the rotational analog for displacement, right? So perfect. So we finally get that work done is equal to torque into d theta. Yeah, so right now there are two points that I want to mention. The first is that when I said work is equal to torque into d theta, I obviously was talking about the magnitude of the torque, right? Because I know torque is a vector, yes, how can you multiply is the obvious question. So I was talking about the magnitude of the torque into d theta, okay? And then number two is that you can also ask, so this derivation that I did was for a force that's always tangential to a disk, right? Uh, what about a force that's not? Or what about, uh, let's say I have a force that has some component in the axial direction as well. Then will it still work? The answer is yes. Because whenever, all that matters, right, is actually only the tangential component of the force. Because only that is contributing to the rotation of this disk about the axis. Because any other force or any other component that's along the axial direction will not contribute at all. In fact, if you take the torque, right, if I had, let's say I have a force that's having some direction like this. And then if I calculate the torque, 
the torque will be the tangential component into r right because torque is nothing but f r sin theta the magnitude of the torque is f into r into sin theta the theta is the angle between f and r now f sin theta is nothing but the tangential component of the force so therefore this will work for any force right irrespective of what the direction of the force is so now that we know this let's check what we learned in uh, the previous chapter right the work energy theorem we learned that the net work done will be equal to the change in kinetic energy of a system so let's see if that's true how do we do that so let's start from what we know we know that work done is equal to torque into the magnitude of the torque into d theta right okay so let's write that down so work done equals tau d theta now what is torque the magnitude of the torque is nothing but uh, i into alpha right with this we already learned so if i replace that then it becomes work done equals i alpha into d theta okay now what i'm going to do is I'll, i'll replace alpha with d omega by dt okay and then i rearrange it i get that work done equals i into d theta by dt into d omega now what is d theta by dt it's nothing but omega right it's change in the angle subtended at the center right divided by time taken which is nothing but omega so finally i get work done equals i omega into d omega now what i'll do is i'll integrate let me integrate say with by limits being omega 1 and omega 2 right so what do i get i get that work done equals half i omega 2 squared minus half i omega 1 squared and what is half i omega squared it's nothing it's the rotational kinetic energy right so perfect so i get that the work done is equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy rotational kinetic energy and that's exactly what i wanted because that is the work energy theorem so we find that all our definitions work right so we can uh, this also means that we can use the work energy theorem using our rotational analogs we can say that the net work done right which is nothing but torque into d theta is equal to the change in kinetic energy and finally let's calculate the power delivered by a torque right so what what is power power is nothing but the work done divided by time taken right so that's nothing but dw by dt where w is the work so if w equals torque into d theta then that is tau d theta then dw by dt will be equal to tau into d theta by dt and what is d theta by dt it's omega right so i finally get that the power delivered is equal to torque into omega okay now perfect so this is again very similar to what we found in mechanics right in translational mechanics where we found that the power delivered by a force is force into its velocity or force into its speed and similarly over here we find that the power delivered by torque is torque into angular velocity